Hello, welcome to Cine City, the Brighton Fin Film Festival, and our first podcast. I'm Tim Brown, co-director of the festival. Today, our reporter Dave Backcock caught up with two of Cine City's patrons, Nick Cave and John Hillcote, director of last year's gritty Australian Western, The Proposition, as they flick through this year's festival programme. They started by talking about sketches of Frank Gehry, Sidney Pollock's acclaimed documentary portrait of the legendary architect behind the King Alfred development in Hove. This is Nick Cave here. I'm looking here and seeing sketches of Frank Gehry, and I'm hoping that's a cautionary tale as to um, the mess some of his hideosities can make to the environment. And that Brighton sees that and rejects the uh, Frank Gehry monstrosity that's being planned. For purely environmental reasons. Well, that, and it's just not a very good one. I mean, if it was something that didn't already look dated on the page, um, which to me it does, it looks like something that already looks kind of tired, maybe it it could inspire some enthusiasm in me for aesthetic reasons, but it it just already looks like um, one of those buildings that you curse the council forever putting up, you know, and there's, there's actually quite a few in Brighton. You know, to me, uh, to me it's sad. Look, I know I'm, I'm not even, you know, I'm not even English, <laughs> you know, and I have no right to talk about this sort of thing, and I'm relatively new in the area, you know, I've only been here four years or something like that, and I should keep my fucking mouth shut and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm, I'm planning on staying here for, you know, the long haul. I'm here till I die, you know, I can throw my ashes in the sea and all that sort of stuff. And, yeah. Yeah. Next. (laughs) Okay. The fucking Wizard of Oz. (laughs) (laughs) Now I'm going to defend the Wizard of Oz. (laughs) Wizard of Oz. Well, I've I've seen the Wizard of Oz, I don't know, 50 times in the last couple of years because my kids have, you know, got it and and got into it. Yeah, I think they'll be... be, uh, awestruck if they go and see that on the big screen. Actually, it's a digital screening where they've restored it, and that actually is going to revolutionise the whole film industry, especially independent filmmaking and classics. It'll be extraordinary, the kind of how big it can get and the kind of craft and magic quality of The Wizard of Oz, I think, for kids. It'll be great for them to see it in that scale. Yeah, you because know, the problem with a lot of classics is they they just see it on little telly, and just simply on the the thing of scale, you know, when you see a face that's twenty feet high, it's totally different experience than seeing a face that's smaller than your own head. That's when it becomes problematic. When if it's smaller than your own head, <laughs> <laughs> they they lose their majestic quality. Next, uh, lunacy, which is a the Czech animator, Frank Meyer, personally has been a huge in, uh, influence on me and uh, inspiring because he, there's an amazing, disturbing surrealism that he brings to animation that most animators leave out. He goes way back. Yeah. I, I remember as a young kid seeing his films and being totally, you know, like a, a, I rem- never forget the image of a a wig, a real human hair crawling across a table and uh, crawling into a drink and things like that that were just mind-blowing for a kid. (laughs) Well, for anyone, really. (laughs) Anyway. Worth checking out? Absolutely. Next. Ten Canoes. I'd like to put in a plug for Ten Canoes, which is uh, David Golpalol, who... um, was an ama- you know he's a legend in Australia he's an amazing actor and he's got this incredible screen presence a face that's just unbelievable this film is by um, Rolf de Herr. he mixes a lot of genres his films are actually kind of hit and miss I think but it's just fantastic that someone is like that because he's a genuine maverick he does it totally on his own terms and he makes films absolutely uh, consistently at a phenomenal rate that I just uh, am amazed. 
even if the film's a bit of a miss, is it worth? Is is there a journey and a story that you're seeing with the filmmaker that's worth catching up? Well, I hear this one is a, is fantastic. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen it, but just the idea of it sounds extraordinary. What's the idea? Well, it's basically it's all Aboriginal actors. It's a story pre white man, so it's it's basically a film in their world uh, before even in the colonial, you know, the colonial thing happened. It's apparently just taking um, Abor- the power of Aboriginal stories and presenting them with the power of the film medium, which sounds great. And what else is there? Um, uh, Scott Walker. Just, well, that, I'm, yeah, I'm dying to, to, I'm dying to see that yeah. film. Yeah. You know, because uh, I'm a huge Scott Walker yeah. fan, and I yeah. uh, have no idea. I don't know really anything about the, what the film is like because he's so reclusive. It's a great opportunity to, you know, glimpse a film that explores his world, basically. For me, he's one of the few people uh, in the music industry that um, I'd be kind of actually quite interested in to see his working methods. And I think in general, there's probably a lot too much information about uh, in, in the world these days about our heroes and so forth. And to me, for me, that can often have a detrimental effect on, on the way that you actually see that that person once you've once you've been exposed to these sorts of things and there, there's a need there seems to be a need in the in the industry to have artists give away more and more of themselves and I, I'm not I don't particularly go for this but but I would be genuinely interested to to look into Scott Walker's world I don't know I, I don't know you know want to know what shaving cream he uses or whatever I just would be interested in seeing uh, this great recluse, uh, his working methods. If that's indeed what the film's about, it may not even be about that. But who knows? <laughs> He's a mysterious man. Yeah. Next. Okay, Lenny What's Cohen, that? I'm your man. Yeah, I'm your man. I'm in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Has to be a hit. I mean, I actually think it, it would have been great to have a little more of... Lenny in there as well. I mean, the stuff he did was I, brilliant. I didn't make the film. <laughs> no. I didn't make the film. No, but I just, just happened to be filmed but the, the film. But fi- the actual bits that he, when he's being interviewed were, I thought, incredible. Yeah. Like his, what it, you know, how he, what he says is just so fantastic. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Um, I mean, that, that film is immensely watchable because of Leonard Cohen in the film and, and the way he comes across and this unbelievably endearing character. Smart. Well, we, we all know that about him anyway. But, but you know, it, it's, it's new footage of him in a reflective, funny kind of mood and, and it's, it just makes for great stuff. There's a lot of other stuff in the film. I mean, they're, they're, she's also taken the... Uh, Leanne Lunson, who's, who's made the film, has taken the performance that's going around... At, at the moment of called I'm Your Man, I think it is. Oh, yeah, no, Came So Far for Beauty, it's called, which was performed here in Brighton, which is different singers performing Leonard Cohen songs. And, we've done, and I'm one of them and various other people are. And we've done that uh, several times around the world. And it's actually a pretty extraordinary show. And she's taken some of the performances from the one that we did in Sydney, filmed that, uh, so there's various people doing versions of their songs, some 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 wonderful versions of his songs actually, intercut with some beautiful footage of Leonard Cohen. You know, old footage of him and and a, and a, a, a current interview, and that, and and it's and it's an extraordinary interview. Is there anything uh, else that we need to mention? Only to say that we are huge supporters of this festival, and you know, I'm very pleased that there is a festival here because. I've always thought there should be, you know, by the, the, it's a beautiful town. It'd make it, I think for other filmmakers, you know, international, as an international festival, it would make it a lot more interesting than just being stuck in hotels in London. It should one day rival Venice and Cannes and the other great festivals that are also by the water. Something about water and filmmaking that goes together. May many may there be many more.